Hi friends, let's talk about the circulating supply and the tokenomics for internet computer protocol. Because in my Discord server available on jerrybanfield.com when you schedule a call, this is the main thing you all have been asking me to talk more about lately. I've seen some YouTube videos you all have made questioning whether I know about the tokenomics, and yes, I do. I've looked a lot at this before putting into ICP. And here's the main thing you need to see when it comes to the price and the tokenomics and why ICP has been plummeting so much. Right now, people have been unstaking mostly early seed investors who bought ICP for just a few cents in an early presale that was years before it launched. These people mostly are unstaking huge amounts of ICP right now, meaning uh, there's about 2 million ICPs getting staked every month but then there's over 3 million, which is millions of dollars every month that's being unlocked right now. And then there's rewards paid out to node providers. And what's important to look at is that in 2024, these big unlocks are mostly going to be finished. I'll show you a couple of isolated bigger unlocks, but these big uh, unlocks that are happening every month that have been consistently tanking the price are going to stop right in time for the bull market so i'm dollar cost averaging into internet computer protocol right now because my long-term projection is very positive in the short term the price is it could go up some it could go down some and either way i'm going to keep accumulating because it looks to me in 2024 is when internet computers are going to kick into some very positive price action and we're going to dive a lot deeper into all of this here first given that we all know so much about ethereum i want to point out that the ethereum supply was significantly inflationary up until recently if you go back to the last bear market and then forward to uh, recently before the merge inter um, ethereum inflated 20 percent in the few years here and it's held up just fine it has maintained its price against bitcoin and if you look back at how Ethereum did in the beginning, there was a lot of token inflation in the first few years of Ethereum. So it's very common for early cryptos to have a bunch of inflation. And the question is, can they survive that early inflation death spiral? Obviously, Ethereum has survived that early death spiral. And by switching to proof of stake, they've greatly reduced the inflation but Ethereum is getting so little use that right now it is back to being inflationary again. And let me remind you, Ethereum is infinitely inflationary as well. They changed into proof of stake. They could change the inflation again and any any time they want to. So there's no guarantee with anything. That said, the, we need to look and see that the ICP price has been truly miserable, down 99% since it was launched and that's why i'm holding two-thirds in bitcoin because if you really hate inflation bitcoin is the way to go that's set and if you hate infinite supply bitcoin has a very fixed amount that it is creating it has the 21 million cap still it's possible to change that and bitcoin there's millions of dollars of new Bitcoin getting dumped on the market every day through mining that was locked. And that you, as you can see, with the halving, people are very excited because it will drop from something like 20 or so million a day to like 10 or so million a day at current prices. But Bitcoin is constantly putting new supply on the market as well. So with internet computer, you ha are in an ecosystem that's very early it has thousands of transactions per second not per day per second and uh, the circulating supply right now half of it is staked and uh, with when these big unstakes stop we will be ready to see some serious upside to the price action so let's look at these unstakes first and then we'll dive much deeper in because these unstakes have been one of the primary drivers plunging the price what you can see is that there's these massive unstakes for example and these are from early investors who had their tokens locked who are just now getting access to them 
there was a, a massive unlock of 1.3 million internet computer in a single day. Another one in October is coming, 1.3 million. Another one in November is coming, another one in December. So this is suppressing the price action seriously because it seems that these early investors are just consistently dumping their ICP. Not necessarily immediately, but they're at least DCAing out and constantly putting a big sell pressure. However, if there's significant buy pressure, that could be countered pretty easily, which means if there's a few million dollars worth of buy pressure coming in at the current price of about $3, that would be absorbed and the price would stay the same pretty easily. Now, I see this significantly limiting how much the price can pump, though, because let's say the price goes to $10, that turns into $13 million in a single unstake instead of just like four or five million so if you uh, if you have a few million dollars of buying power to counter this we'll keep the price treading water but this is where it really gets exciting for having the price go up is when we get into may these big unlocks are coming mostly to an end so here's the entire spectrum of the unlocks we're looking at with icp and you'll notice now you can lock your, it takes, you have a choice about how long to dissolve your ICP when you unlock it. So what we see going out into the future is people who have their ICP locked for a long time and then are dissolving it. A lot of the stake to ICP though is not even dissolving, which means it won't even show when it's coming on here. And there's a minimum dissolve of six months and a maximum of eight years, and a lot of ICP is staked, like half of it or so is staked for eight years. So there's a ton of ICP that's off the market completely for the foreseeable future. And a bunch of these big unlocks are going to come to an end starting in May 2024, and with this last 480,000 one, and then we have much smaller unlocks except for this one for 918,000. And from there, we don't have any of these huge unlocks on the horizon again. So I think by the time we're going into 2024, 2025, we will be in a much better position for some solid price action because this is when it will shift to only about a million ICP being unlocked every month. And right now, that would mean that there would be more that is being staked every month then being unlocked and once that happens the price should go up significantly let's explore the rest of the icp tokenomics here in the dashboard this is available at dashboard.internetcomputer.org we uh, first look at the transactions there are thousands of transactions per second not per day this these transactions are equivalent to hundreds of thousands of ethereum transactions this network is the most advanced technologically in all of crypto, which is why I'm excited about it. That said, me being excited about it does not equal that I'm definitely right, and sometimes superior technology does not get adopted. A lot of people right now are building on inferior technology, and when users demand better apps and refuse to use these crap launches, on Ethereum Layer 2s that are, uh, I mean, just rip-offs. When users demand better experiences and developers start looking more long-term, getting everything on chain, then uh, this is where internet computer is going to really soar. So if you look at the total supply, it's at 506 million right now. The circulating supply is 445 million, and you're consistently getting more of these unlocks that were not available before coming online if we look down one of the things i'm very excited about the icp network the canisters are dApps or smart contracts more and more canisters are consistently getting deployed over the last year which to me equals the uh, growth of the ecosystem now one of the big problems if you look at internet computer with the current supply has been the burning Internet computer, like Ethereum, has a burn mechanism, and you burn when you want to use the network. 
And right now, the amount of rewards given to node providers versus the burn for those node providers doing that work has been grossly out of proportion. And that's mainly because internet computer has a reverse gas fee model and developers are not having to burn that much ICP to get to use the network right now because one, the network is very cost efficient, unlike the Ethereum network, which is disgustingly cost inefficient. And even these layer twos are exponentially more cost inefficient than ICP is. So the ICP network is pretty cheap to use right now. If they decided to charge a lot more for it, you'd probably have a lot higher burn, but then it would not be set up to be mass adoption friendly. And that's where the real opportunity with this is. So the more ICP gets adopted, this burn rate has the ability to go up a lot while the node provider rewards may actually go down as the price increases. Now, if the price decreases, node provider rewards will continue to increase. And right now, one of my concerns with Internet Computer is that the way the voting rewards are calculated it, combined with the node provider rewards is setting up a scenario of possible significant inflation if the price drops further and, or the burn does not pick up significantly. So let's look. One thing we really want to see is how much is Internet Computer actually inflating? The annualized inflation rate for Internet Computer over 2022 and 2023 was only about three or so percent. So for people talking about how the tokenomics and the supply is out of control, that's simply not true. This is inflating at about the same rate that Ethereum inflated from 2018 to 2022. For example, if you multiply 100 times 1.04 and go one, two, three, four, five years. That's about the same rate that Ethereum got to where it's at today. Now, it looks like because the node provider rewards have picked up recently, that the inflation rate this year is likely to be a little higher. But on the dashboard, you can check the actual inflation anytime and do the calculation yourself by doing this. So you look at the total supply a year ago and then you look at the current supply today so we're going to do the actual calculation to show you how anytime you can look at the real-time inflation so 469 213 and we'll round because the hundreds are not relevant here so that's last year's supply and then current supply 506 506 396 506, 396, 506, 396. And I divided, so we'll need to inverse this. So uh, the actual inflation rate now has been 8%. 8% and uh, if uh, in a single year that the supply has went up. So actually, no, excuse me. That was since the initial inception of internet computer. So I have it selected on all right here. So the entire total inflation of internet computer since it's tracking it on here since 2021 in May is a total of 8%. Now, the reason the price has plummeted so much is because there were a lot of tokens locked up and in these dissolving nodes that investors have been selling once they've been unlocked. But as I showed you, most of that is going to go away soon and it looks like we're going to swing into having more people staking than unstaking, which the price should go up a lot once that happens. If we want to calculate the last year, we can look at the last year right here and do the same calculation. So a year ago, the price, the supply was 489,682. And if we start with this number, we don't have to do that additional calculation. So the total supply right now is 506,396. And we'll divide by what it was a year ago. So that's 489,655 divided by 489,655. So the inflation in the last year on internet computer is 3.5%. So that is completely reasonable. However, with the node rewards, if the price tanks further, the inflation could go up significantly. 
but if more gets burned, it could go down as well. Now, the voting rewards function is the main driver of inflation. There's two drivers of inflation. One is the voting rewards function, and the other is the node provider rewards. The node provider rewards have to be kept at a minimum in order for the network to function because the machines are expensive. This is essentially like crypto and Amazon Web Services rolled into one protocol and if you don't have enough of the nodes online and the node expensive node machines running then you could look at the whole network collapsing so the i've recently done several videos about a possible death spiral and they the Definity team is very aware of this and uh, are working on it that said if the price doesn't drop anymore that's not going to be an issue and even if it drops to two dollars which would be down 33 percent from now it's still not going to be that much of an issue the fact is the inflation that we've actually seen in the supply is three and a half percent which is totally reasonable now you're wondering well how is the voting rewards function so much higher the voting rewards function is higher because of undistributed voting rewards so these are voting rewards that people have not collected which equals approximately another one ish percent of the supply so there's about another one percent or so of the supply sitting here that has not actually been minted yet and i like the way they do this because this means if you accumulate the voting rewards but don't ever actually claim them then those will not be added to the token supply for example if you stake a bunch of icp and forget about it or lose your key or pass your voting rewards will just keep accumulating and they won't ever had to be actually added to the supply so make sure you've got a plan in case something happens to your icp come to think of it i need to tell my wife about it because my voting rewards could pile up if i kicked off so the the voting rewards function this is the entire internet computer protocol is governed by the network nervous system which is a DAO that controls what happens on the network. And when you vote on proposals that modify the network, you get rewards for participating in the governance. And those rewards are the driver of inflation. So what I'm seeing is that if ICP gets significantly adopted and the burn rate kicks up, the node provider rewards will not need to be modified at least until the burn rate kicks up a lot and the network's getting used a ton which means if we can if the price gets into a cycle of appreciation where the price is going up the node provider rewards will go down because those are paid essentially in a pegged fiat so if the the price goes up for icp these go down which is why with the price going down the rewards have been going up and then the burn also would go down to match it as well which means if the price pumps and the network usage explodes we could see the node provider rewards and the burn not contribute to inflation the node provider rewards would essentially be canceled out by the burn and then you're just left with the voting rewards function now, the voting rewards function gives you higher percentages if you're staking for longer. So the highest voting rewards are being earned by nodes that have ICP locked up for eight plus years. So we're talking these nodes, the majority of these undistributed voting rewards are not going to be able to be turned into ICP for a long time, at least eight years and uh, that's from the point when if you have a neuron and you decide to dissolve it that it starts counting the eight years then so there's a lot of icp that's staked and not dissolving for eight years right now which means many of these rewards will not even hit the supply and right now you've only seen 28 million in icp which is about half a percent of the total supply in voting rewards so the more mature ICP gets, the more the voting rewards will contribute to inflation and the higher the inflation could potentially be in the future. Thus, that is acceptable though to keep the price reasonable so it doesn't spiral way too high 
which is also an issue on something where you're actually using the network a little bit of inflation could be healthy for driving people to use the network and participate in voting rewards at least if you believe the governments around the world they're big proponents of having a little bit of inflation to keep prices stable otherwise the prices of things would constantly deflate and go down as money was lost from circulation so i think the icp tokenomics model has been very well thought out in every area except a death spiral from the price on node provider rewards and they do have some kind of fail safe in place for that that they can try and take the edge off if say the price plummeted below a dollar but I see that the tokenomics with ICP, if you're holding ICP, you more than likely want to stake it and earn voting rewards. And it's an ideal scenario when you compare to holding something like Bitcoin, where Bitcoin is constantly being unlocked. Some argue whether it's really inflation or whether it's just token unlocks, but there's millions of dollars every day of Bitcoin that's being dumped on the market and dumped on exchanges by miners who are mining it it's just bitcoin right now is about four or five hundred times bigger than internet computer and the market easily absorbs a few million dollars a day so the big question is will internet computer get adopted enough to uh, maintain the uh, circulating supply and the tokenomics and the price action i think internet computer has everything in place for solid tokenomics the burn mechanism will likely significantly increase in the future the node provider rewards will decrease almost the only driver of inflation will be the voting rewards function which encourages people to stake and contribute and you may have some big enterprises and big people invest in internet computer and stake and lock up for quite a while so that they can have a say over the network and I think the tokenomics of internet computer are very sustainable and very similar to many other early other chains. And uh, at the same time, though, if this doesn't get adopted, it's just going to go to absolute zero. I mean, if if you don't kick up the burn rate at some point, if you don't have more users come in and uh, if the node rewards keep going up, there is a very possible death spiral for this where the node rewards are calculated based on the total supply so uh, if as the this is why the aprs can get so much higher for this based on today's rate because the current voting rewards are about five percent of the total supply so if the node providers keep kicking out huge node rewards and then these are calculated based on the total supply the price could really go to one cent at which point i imagine the network would just implode and nobody would use it anymore and that is a risk and i'm very aware of that risk and that's why i have 30 percent internet computer and 60 something percent of my portfolio in bitcoin if my internet computer goes to zero my bitcoin probably won't and if you want the absolute best tokenomics and the least amount of inflation per market cap. I mean, Bitcoin and Ethereum are pretty much your only options. Almost every other crypto is just cranking out tons of inflation all the time and printing endless amounts of new tokens. And many of these, many other projects that are have bigger market caps, their inflation is way, 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 way worse than internet computers. And there's very little value holding the token. What I, I I guess we'll need to do more videos because with internet computer, there's a lot of potential for tokens to be locked up the same way that Ethereum has been locked up in the past. Although less Ethereum is being locked up now because you have all these stable coins and this may be an issue on internet computer going forward as well. But there's lots of opportunities for internet computer or ICP to be locked up as more tokens launch on the service nervous system or sns there's a ton of ways that the icp the things are going to flip and uh, that there's going to continually be more icp staked rather than unstaked and as that happens then the prices can really kick off so my possible price target for this is a thousand or possible market cap for this is a thousand times where it's at today
So I see that in the scenario I'm investing for, that the market cap for this could easily be over a trillion and a half dollars one day if this gets widely adopted and built on. It looks like to me that trajectory is very possible right now. However, there's plenty of scenarios where that doesn't happen and it doesn't work out. So I see that the tokenomics of internet computer have their risks, but when you look at the big picture, everything is going very well especially considering it's at all-time lows and that sentiment is at pretty much maximum negative right now. And uh, there's lots of building happening on internet computer. There's lots of opportunities. It has the best technology. I mean, considering this may be close to the bottom or we may see a bottom in the next few months, I think things are going really well and I think there's huge upside from here. That said, I'm planning to keep DCAing because the price could easily go down to $2. And I'll be happy to buy at $2. I'll be happy to buy at $1. And uh, let's see where we go from here. If you've enjoyed this video, I really appreciate you watching all the way to the end. For the best experience, go to jerrybanfield.com and schedule a call with me where you'll get lifetime access to my Discord server. Most of the videos I make are in response to comments in my Discord server and questions I get asked in one-on-one -on -one calls. If you want me to look at a specific crypto, you can schedule a call and tell me all about that crypto as well. And uh, I uh, appreciate you being here and I'll hope to see you on another video soon.